Hey, what is going on, everyone? This is Greg, your co-host to the Grilling to Get Away podcast, and I am here with my buddy, Mike. Mike, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no, we've been uh, connected a little bit over Instagram, and, um, you know, I love seeing what you're doing out there. Um, but why don't you tell the listeners and the watchers, the people watching, that like a little bit more about your background, about who you are, how long you've been, you know, barbecuing and grilling. Sure. Um, well, my name is Mike Patton. Um, I'm a mechanic by trade. So, and right now I'm doing a, I do a mobile performance tuning with cars, but barbecue is my passion. I've always loved it. Um, and actually I started in, uh, from a guy from Wisconsin when I, I lived out in Minnesota for about 15 years and I worked oh, at really? Hudson Pontiac. Yeah. Hudson Pontiac in Hudson, Wisconsin. And uh, he, his name was Clyde Mayfield. And he used to bring stuff that smelled so damn good. And I remember my dad doing grilling when I was younger. Um, just, you know, burgers and dogs and stuff. Nothing nothing big. But I always remember that taste. And he brought in some chicken that was out of this world. And when I tasted it, it brought back all those memories of being on the grill and everything. And I thought, you know what? Hell, I'm going home. I'm buying a grill. So I did that. Started with a little uh, charcoal kettle grill. And uh, it, I mean... Shit, that was like 18 years ago now. And I, oh, I mean, yeah. I ruined a lot of meat to try to figure stuff out. You know, a lot of dry stuff came right in the trash sometimes. But uh, then I moved up to a char griller, um, started using hardwood lump charcoal. Uh, then I started using just nothing but fruit woods in that grill as well. Um, but uh, after, over the years, I uh, started doing other stuff and, and taking risks and, and having a, a blast with it. So now I'm working with a Rectech grill. It's a wood pellet grill. Sure. And I absolutely love it. It's awesome. Um, it's kind of like a set it and forget it type thing. And, and the taste is unparalleled. I love it. So. Yeah, so, so you started, you started on the charcoal and then you went up to a char griller, it sounds like, and then you kind of experimented some yeah. more and then you got into the pellet. So do you just have the pellet right now or do you have multiple? Um... I got the pellet grill now. I also have a, a Kingsford charcoal uh, barrel smoker as okay. well. And then the gas grill for backups, of course. Got to have it. Of course. It. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you remember what your first cook was on your Rectech? Oh boy, the first cook on the Rectech was pizza. It mm. was, believe it mm. or not. Yeah, um, I saw a lot of pictures and a lot of advertisements with the Rectech with people doing pizza, and I had to try it, and, and it was awesome. It came out, it came out great. Um, but the next one was some country style ribs, just some basic stuff to mm. to get the feel of it, because it is a different kind of grill. You know, it's mm. different. Um, I'm used to stoking it every 30 minutes or checking it and it's easy to just set the temp and just let it go and do its thing. And, um, yeah. I don't want to keep plugging Rectech, but they've got to be the best damn smoker grill out there that I've ever tried. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I've, I've heard that, you know, being in this kind of environment, I get to see a lot of different grills and I, you yeah. know, the, Rec, the Rectech, uh, community is, is, is strong and, and very vocal about how, how good that, that product is. It is. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, no that's, need that's to great. spray or anything. No spritzing, yeah. no spraying. It comes out juicy always. It's awesome. Yeah, I love it. That's good. Yeah. Well, it's good. Well, thanks for sharing that. Um, and you know, I've I've been following you on Instagram for a while now. So awesome. Uh, what's your your um your handle is secondhand smoke ri? Is that because of uh, bar Rhode Island? barbecue? So yeah, barbecue Rhode Island. So it'd oh, be barbecue. secondhand smoke bbq ri. Yeah, okay. and that is for yeah. Rhode Island. Yep. Yeah, and we'll put that in the show notes so people can find you um, and awesome. get inspir yeah get inspiration just like me. Um, and I saw that you just like within the next like within the last day, um, you did some St. Louis style ribs. Yeah, um, and, you know, ribs is one of those things that you know you, you have to practice a little bit. And if somebody's listening, they haven't tried it before. You know, I'd it love is. to walk. You know, I'd love to walk through that process with you because um, sure. they look they looked amazing when I when I saw them on your pictures. So why don't you take me through that like? Um, is St. Louis style like your your preferred cut of ribs, um, or is that just something like you found like at the local butcher that was on sale? Yeah, the the I always shoot for the St. Louis style. They're my favorite cut. They seem to have the most meat. I like the way that they're shaped. Um, a lot of people's go to ribs are baby backs, but it seems yeah. like every all the good stuff's cut off on a baby back for me. Sure. So I, I like it. So either just a normal rack that's untrimmed, I like doing that too, or the St. Louis is definitely my go to. I'd love it. Mm -hmm awesome yeah do you um do you trim or do you just leave it um i trim a little bit i of course i get rid of the silver skin that's underneath mm -hmm. um and yeah. i'll trim a little bit of fat off if it's got some big fat chunks on it um mm -hmm. but i tend to leave everything the way that it is even that big bone that's up on the corner some people trim yeah. that off too to make it look a little better but there's a lot of good yeah. meat there so i like to leave it yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, there is. There's definitely a lot of meat there. So you don't, you're not trying to make it look pretty. You're, you're, you're going more for substance there. Exactly. Uh, you're taking, taking the membrane off the back and maybe trimming some fat and trimming some, a little bit of meat off there, but for the most part, you're keeping it intact. I try to. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well then let's talk through your process then. So you got all, you know, cut up however you want to do it. You know, what's uh, what's your next step after that? Uh, adding the burn pit barbecue guys rub. <laughs> believe it or not yeah, i love yeah. doing a combination i love the ground pounder and i love the pop smoke and i love them together so i do a lot of that together yeah. so i'll usually use the ground pounder first just a little yeah. bit just a nice dusting of it and then yeah. put the pop smoke on top and it's just phenomenal i love it so then they oh, go on the rec tech uh for about two at 225 for about five and a half to six hours I usually take the tongs out there and do the bend test. If they just start to break, I'm going to pull them. Okay. Um, sometimes if I do it the same amount of time, they'll break a little bit more than what I want, but they still come out just great. Okay. So you got, okay. um, do you do a binder at all? Are you using mustard, you using olive oil, anything on there? Or you just I don't. I, yeah. I use a uh, uh, olive oil as a binder. So I, I, I've tried it with the, the, mustard i've tried all different kinds of stuff I, I mean that's i love trying new stuff i love different methods so i'm constantly on instagram or facebook and checking out other people's you know just watching their videos to see what they do mm -hmm. um but i i like it <laughs> yeah yeah I've, I've been using olive oil quite a bit too um and I, I find that uh yeah for me it just works well um but yeah, yeah that's awesome yeah. So you said then you get to, you get your rec tech up uh, to temperature. What what type of pellets or what type of flavors are you using when you're doing your 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 ribs? Right now I'm running cherry pellets. Cherry the pit boss okay. pellets. Yeah, I love them. They're great. Okay. Have you yeah. found that? Have you found that? Um, now you say pit boss. Um, is there a certain kind that you usually use um, that you you found have worked better for you? Uh, well, the rec tech pellets are really really good. Um, but the shipping and getting them here is a different story. So oh, yeah. I like to be able to go down to the local hardware store or to the Lowe's and they carry all the pit boss products and they're pretty reasonably priced and they taste great. So okay. I'm sticking with those. Yeah. So you're, you're doing what you can find at the local places um, to avoid shipping and stuff. That makes sense. I get that. Yeah. Um, and, and you're putting them on, um, you said 250, about 250 or Two, you're 225, 225. 225. The go to yeah, for me. And, uh, from what I gather from what you said before, no spritzing, no wrapping, just straight, you know, 225. Straight. Yep. 225, five and a half hours. Don't open it. Don't look at it. Don't spritz. Don't mop. Nothing. And they come yeah. out. I mean, you've seen the video. I, I yeah. can squeeze that thing. I was cutting them on the cutting board and they're squirting juice out everywhere. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so do you then do, you, are you monitoring the internal temp um, with like some sort of thermometer or like does the right? Like, no. Nope. Okay. Yeah. So it's just, I, I will you, with beef ribs because they're okay. a little bit thicker and I want to know where they're at. Um, yeah. Because they're treated just a little bit differently, but I'm strictly mm -hmm. on time with that. I've noticed like between five and six hours. So I'll check it at about just after five hours and then maybe let yeah. it go for another 45 minutes or an hour. If it's not doing the bend test, if it's not right where I want it, that's what I do. And so it's, it's down and dirty for you, Mike. It sounds like you're, you're putting a little olive oil, you're putting the rub on. 225 yeah. five to six hours no checking no touching uh, until about that five hour mark and then you know for the most part it sounds like you've got it down yeah i love it they're coming out great i get great feedback so i must yeah. be doing something right yeah and how, how how many how many terrible racks of ribs do you think it took to get to your, to that spot oh uh, just a few not too bad with the ribs because the ribs are a little bit easier to cook more with the big meats like the brisket or a big roast beef or a pulled pork it took me a long time to get that down really good but i got it now okay that's good um so then you, you pull it off are you letting it rest a little bit before you slice into it i will i'll put like a i'll put it on the cutting board i got this big aluminum tray and then i put a cutting board on top of that and then i'll put a towel just a, like a kitchen towel and just lay it gently across the top let that okay. sit for about 15 minutes or so so 15 minutes and I'm assuming because you're not spritzing or opening it up or anything like that, you're not putting any sauce on it. Um, um, I don't. The grill. Now, my new favorite sauce, and no lie here, is that pogey bait. That okay. it has the perfect amount of heat with sweet. It, it's the best stuff I've ever had, and on ribs, it's phenomenal. But yeah. no, uh, uh, my son doesn't like barbecue sauce of any kind. I don't know why he's crazy, but he, sure. he just doesn't. So I, I try to use. Uh, 
I'd use just the dry rub and then after I cut them and then I'll serve the sauce on the side or make it an option. Um, yeah. But that's what I usually do too. And I, I like it better drizzled on top instead of cooked and try to make it into like a glaze on the, on the ribs. I like yeah. the wet, wet, just pour it right on and eat those things. Awesome. Yeah. Even my wife, she, she doesn't like to try new stuff either. And, and the barbecue sauce, she's really picky about it. So I took that. There's like that little flap on the inside of the, the ribs that I cut off. Now I'll pull that after about two hours and cut that up into little squares and put it on a plate with a little bit of sauce. That's kind of a teaser for everybody before the ribs are done. And yeah. I did that when I did them the day before yesterday, I, I just gave her the plate and it already had the pokey bait on there. And then she was like, what sauce is this? I said, it's the burn pit stuff that I've been trying to get you to try. And she's like, it's perfect. It's got the perfect amount of heat with the perfect amount of sweet. I said, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. So, now, mm -hmm. I appreciate that. And uh, just yeah. so people listening, we didn't talk beforehand. So this is all. Uh, yeah, I'm no, I, uh, yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. Appreciate you trying the products and stuff. And yeah, we got connected actually initially, right? Because uh, I believe, uh, was it your son um, or your, your uh, someone overseas? And we sent some stuff over there. Was that um, you or somebody else I'm thinking of? No, nope, that was somebody else. Okay. Um, I did have another account called Rectech Smoker. I had about okay. 4,600 followers on there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Yep. That's so that's uh, another thing that uh, we don't talk about too much is like when we have these people that have like large accounts, um, they can get uh, attacked and their accounts can get stolen. Do you ever find oh, out yeah. what happened to that? No, I, um, they changed the name. I know that to something else. Um, and it, it's still active. I've, it's I've still active Instagram a hundred times. They never get back yeah. to you. They don't do anything. Oh man, I'm sorry to hear cool. that, but yeah, yeah, I couldn't, I okay. couldn't remember how we first initially, but uh, I know that I follow you now, um, and you've been doing a lot of good stuff out there. Um, so this is just like a hobby for you. you. You do it, and then you go out there and you and you share. Um, what yeah. uh, what would you say has been like the one like either recipe or post that you've put out there that's got you the most attention? Oh, I'd have to say the pulled pork. Cause I got that down now where I can just, uh, and I do it with skin on. So a lot of people will pull the skin off and inject yeah. it or whatnot. I'll, I will inject, but I'll do it up under that skin. So I'll take some butter and a little bit of olive oil and some of the pop smoke and then mm -hmm. put it in my syringe and put it up underneath that skin. And I'll throw that bad boy on there for about 18 hours. And then when it's done, I'll pull that skin off and I'll scrape off all the fat that's underneath there, all the little fat nodules that are underneath that skin and put it in a pan and render it down into a liquid. And what doesn't render down turns into these crispy little piles of fat goodness. I mean, it's, it's not good for you by any means, but it is absolutely awesome. Um, I learned that from a comedian named Ralphie May and uh, he was probably about 450 pounds, I think. Uh, and he I think could I cook. Yeah. I remember you Ralphie. Um, yeah. Uh, no, that's awesome. So you, you like, cause for the most part, people like when they go to the store and they buy like a pork butter, pork shoulder, it's still, it's, it's got the skin off of it. You know, it's all trimmed yeah. down already. So yeah. where do you get yours from then? From the international meat market in central falls, Rhode Island. They have okay. the best meat and the best prices. I don't go anywhere else. Okay. I love it. Yeah. So you go to the meat market, you get it, you get it with the skin on, um, and it's, you, you inject it a little bit, you put a little bit underneath there, um, and then you let it go. You said like 18 hours, like at 18, 225? I'll do 18 hours till about 205 degrees for an internal temp. Okay. And then I, yep, pull that stuff off, scrape that fat, make those, those crispy nodules. And I'll take those little crispy pieces and put them off to the side and take that rendered fat and pour it right back into the, into the pulled pork, the big pile of pulled pork. And then yeah. when I make the sandwiches, I take those little crispy pieces and use them as wow. a sandwich topper. And they're wow. absolutely phenomenal. I love them. That's crazy, man. I like that's awesome. That sounds delicious. Um it is. It's but, incredible. But, but my uh my arteries are starting to harden already from this. Right, right. <laughs> and even Rafi May, he's passed now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's no longer with us. Yeah, I know. And uh I'd imagine some of those recipes might be the reason why. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. So so you well, so when you pull off that skin and you start, you know, taking the fat off of it and you put it in yep. a pan, is the rest of the meat resting at that point while you're rendering down that fat? It is. is. I'll doing? put a I'll put a towel over it for just a, again 15, 20 minutes maybe while I'm rendering that stuff down. And that's where I got the most attention on that is when I pull the towel off and I can actually mm -hmm. reach into the meat and just pull the bone right out. I mean it's so tender. Bone Boom. Yeah. Both bones, the shoulder bone and that big big bone with the two ends on it, they come yeah. right out clean. Unbelievable. And I love it. 
I got That's it crazy. down. That's crazy. Um, and then, so you're, you're shredding it up. You're putting it on a bun or what have you, you're drizzling some of that fat back in there. Um, and then as you're you know making the sandwiches, you're putting some of those crispy nuggets or whatever you got there from the fat yes. and yep. the skin on top. So it's a nice little, you get the crunch from the the skin or whatever's left over there. You get the moisture yes. from the fat, you get the flavor from the pork. Oh man, that, that sounds amazing. It is. It is. Um, and then and of course, you, a little bit of the pogey bait on yeah, top. I was just going to ask, do you Phenomenal. sauce it then? That's the, I do, I do sauce after always, I'll yeah. always serve it on the side. Cause again, not yeah. everybody likes it, but yeah, I, I do. And it, it seems better. I, I like more when it's right from the bottle. I think I feel I taste it more than if yeah. I let it roast on the grill for a little bit. I like sure. it better that way. So, yeah, that's true. So then like, I would imagine it's so juicy anyways, from all that stuff you're putting in there that you probably it don't even need sauce um, for it. Um, now in like I'm not familiar too much with like uh Rhode Island barbecue, but um is it similar to like East Coast where you're putting like slaw on like your pulled pork sandwiches too? Like a yeah, homemade yeah. I do yeah. do that. My my wife will make the the um homemade slaw mm -hmm. and then I'll just put a little bit, just a tiny bit on top, just to top yeah. it off. And yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Is that a vinegar based slaw or is that kind of more, you know? midwest we like to do mayonnaise or whatever yeah, she's from minnesota so, oh she yeah, is okay she does the, yeah she does the mayonnaise yep that's okay. phenomenal that's good that's that sounds delicious i'm gonna have to try that right. um i don't think i've done that with uh, leaving the skin on like that and then uh rendering it down so yeah, when you have to yeah i gotta try that so when you're when you're um when he got it on the smoker are you at 225 or are you um you know 225 225 yep. And when, what type of, I'm imagining you're doing it on your rec tech. Um, oh, yeah. Are you using cherry pellets as well or are you using something else? I, I use the cherry pellets if that's what I have in there. I don't like to switch them up a lot because it's kind of a pain. Um, but either the cherry or the apple are my two favorites. Okay. Cherry, apple. Yeah. Those are, those are great flavors for pork. Um, yeah, they are. And, you know, during this 18 hour cook, you said like this is something that you usually keep temp on. Um, are you using like a meter, like a wireless thermometer or how are you keeping temp with it? Yeah, I got a, uh, Wi-Fi, uh, Inkbird thermometer. So it has an app on my phone. Yeah. So I have the probes in there. It comes with four probes. I'll probe it in three different spots just to make sure I'm getting the sweet spot and take the best temperature that I can get. And then I can, from wherever I'm at, I can pull the phone out and open the app and go into it and see what temp it's at. It's perfect. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Great. Yeah. And are you basting, spritzy, doing anything with this one, or are you just letting it, it doesn't ride need again? it? No, doesn't not with the rec tech. Okay. I don't know if it's the way it's designed or what the barrel, the way the fans are. It doesn't need it. It never okay. does. Nice, nice. Mm. That's awesome. That it sounds is. great. It's been a while since I've done a pork shoulder, um, so I might have to find one here with the skin on. Uh, you got to check that. out the yeah. video. I got some yeah. videos on there of me mm -hmm. doing it. So yeah, it does. that's definitely. I'll put a. I'll put a link to that post too so people can check it out yeah awesome um, um yeah once we uh put this out there for the world i'll make sure to put it in the notes so people can go out and find it um so you know we do have a lot of um you know new barbecue or grillers that come and you know either listen to the podcast or you know follow us as well sure so now that you've been doing it for 18 years or what have uh what have you you know if you could go back in time to when you first started you know what advice would you give yourself uh, you know, I don't really have anything. Like I would say, don't be afraid to try new things or to try stuff on your own without help. Um, but that's who I am. I do that. That's how I became a mechanic. I've never had any formal school training and I've been a mechanic for over 20 years and very successful. And just from trying new stuff and not be afraid to do it. Um, read, 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 I'm an avid reader about everything. So when I find a subject that I like or something I want to cook, I'm going to read. And then yeah. even when I come up with a recipe, um, I'll see something. Not a lot of people put all their recipes right on Instagram, but they'll have the video of showing what it is. So I know what it is. I'll write right. that stuff down and then I'll look at three or four different recipes and then throw everything in the trash and go right to my book and write my own recipe. So it's mine. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Don't be afraid to look at other people's recipes and, and kind of build your own, yeah. you know? Yeah. Well, and that's. Yeah, that's that's the fun part about this too. Is like there's so many different variations, and you can change it up just slightly to make yep. it your own style. And that only comes with time. I mean, you've been doing it for a long time, so now you kind of know 
you know, what tastes well, what you, what, what you like and what your family likes to eat. So, right. um, that, that's great advice. Uh, what, what piece of equipment, um, would you say that, uh, you know, you couldn't go without right now? Uh, the internal thermometer to monitor okay. the internal temp. Yeah. Get a good one. Spend the money on it. Spend the money Definitely. on a good, good, good thermometer that helps uh, keep temp. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And I even keep a backup uh, instant read. So it's the one with that folds out the probe so I can oh, yeah. probe it too, to make sure that it's still within where I'm looking for. So yeah. Have multiple, like one, you know, one backups, one backup, one just old school that yep. you can just poke in there if you have any questions about it. All right. That's good advice too. Yep. Um, and then what's, um, you know, what's something that maybe you haven't done yet that, um, you've been exploring or looking at doing that you might be doing soon uh desserts that's yeah. i haven't really done anything i'd like to do some of them baked apples or something you know where they're they're hollowed out and then they're put yeah. on the smoker with like a like an apple crisp in the center of it or something like that yeah yeah i've had my heart set on that for a long yeah. time and I, i've looked at a few recipes i just haven't done it yet but i plan to i'm going yeah. to you know um, what I was, I was i was talking with my wife the other day about that i was like you know we're watching all these baking shows now because you know the halloween baking stuff is going on and yeah i'm like you know what i'm just so intrigued like what can we do on on the grill or the smoker and there's a lot of op options out there um, there I is just, ha just haven't put the time and effort to it just yet but you might see some new stuff coming out hopefully uh, where we're experimenting on some of that stuff and i'll be looking forward to seeing what you put out there too yeah uh, awesome. um and then, yeah, you mentioned like you like to read. Um, so what have you have you found a book or like a barbecue book or something that you've you found that you kind of keep going back to that you really like? Um, I in the beginning I did. I bought a bunch of different books. Um, that was before the Kindle really came out, though. You yeah. know, and now I'm on the Kindle and I belong to that uh, Kindle Unlimited. So you can just type in barbecue and it'll yeah. give you a, tons of different books from short story, you know, like 10 pages to 200 pages. So anything like that, I can click on that. If I can get it for free, I'll download it and I'll spend the night reading that thing. And it just, even now, even after so many years of doing it and doing my own thing, I still like to read those books because you kind of forget a lot of stuff and it kind of keeps you grounded and lets you know, you know, don't forget the little details because everything matters. Yeah. So no. yeah, that's what I like to do. And not to mention the internet, just type in barbecue and start reading, you know, different things that people do. And there's some, I mean, guys have been doing it, you know, 30 years and I read what they're doing and I'm going, what the heck is this guy talking about? I would never do it that way. There's yeah. a lot of that, but everybody does it their own way and whatever's successful, you know, and works, I'm going to go with it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. There's a lot of information out there and it's a continual process. Like, um, I don't think it anybody is. will ever learn every single thing about barbecue. So that's the, that's the good part about it too. You're, we're right. constantly, constantly learning. Uh, well, that's great advice. And you know, Mike, it was so much fun to have you on here. Finally talk to you in person yeah, here. Thank you. Yeah. Um, since we've been kind of following each other on Instagram, I get to see a lot of what you're doing and uh, yeah, no, just thank you so much for being on here. I really enjoy it. I learned some stuff today, especially about that pork shoulder. Um, awesome. That's, that's great tips and stuff. So um, yeah. yeah, thanks. And appreciate having you on. Anytime. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, no problem. All right.